I'm putting this video together with the help of some of uh, Juan O'Savin's um, statements about occult um, mystery school, basically their occult worship and how uh, Washington DC is an occult city. And I've basically put together a whole map of how the Freemasons have made rituals through a lot of American cities and have done this intercontinental worship uh, for the specific event relating to the two eclipses. It also relates to Alice in Wonderland and I'm going to explain all this and how they've kind of made a map um, over the United States and Canada. And this all goes back to Atlantis uh, it also works through with the Olympics, the last three Olympics, and plus the London Olympics. So we're going to go step by step, and I'm going to have uh, Juan's uh, voice from McAllister TV come in, where a few uh, really uh, important points that he's made just to help back up all this information. You can see here the two eclipses that are going across the United States, creating an X over St. Louis. Um, the one going from Seattle down to South Carolina, the other one going from Mexico all the way through to Newfoundland, Canada, um, and then all the other eclipses that are happen to be going through there as well over the next uh, you know few years and stuff. But this this double eclipse that creates the X is what's creating the X event. Um, also, you know, my last videos was all about how Alice in Wonderland is in the sky. It's basically being mirrored down onto uh, North America. So they're ma they're mirroring the sky down onto the onto the Earth and created um, symbolic symbols through certain cities relating to this these eclipses. The Seattle, uh, South Carolina eclipse actually. Uh, went through in 2017 and the next eclipse will be going from Mexico to Newfoundland, Canada in 2024. So the number 24 uh, is like a mirror image of these 42 judges that uh, Juan talks about and how important they are. I put this map together showing you the triangle here where all the, um, the Olympics are. The one is was Rio and then um, 2020 is going to be in Tokyo, so 2016, 2020, and 2024 will be in Paris. That's the triangle. And if you notice the little black triangle in the middle, that's the Bermuda Triangle. And this is why I say it all goes back to Atlantis. You can listen to the Dark Journalist on YouTube. He's really covered a lot of geopolitical events around this area. Um, also, the findings of some underground uh, sites and stuff. It's very interesting learning all about this area, but this area is super important. Um, I think basically it has some type of portal uh, going through there. So you can also see um, through um, my pink lines here is the eclipse, and then the red um, triangle makes the Venus um, five pointed star, which represents Venus. Now the blue triangle that goes right up to Nunavut is basically the crown. Um, the crown is up in Nunavut and this relates to Alice in Wonderland, this crown, and I, I will explain all that. Um, also the bottom of this blue triangle is, the, is um, uh, Lima in Peru, which was a Pan American Games, and that is kind of like the ancient city of um, some of the first civilizations and then the other hand uh, the left hand side of that V is Easter Island and we'll go through it all together but I just want to let you listen to one and he's going to explain um, a few things about this mega event. Well I think it's just this isn't wasted time this is not just uh, a mental exercise if you don't understand your enemy and these people are our enemy um, uh, as Americans, as uh, Christians, as patriots, um, they're trying to take our life force and channel it to their purposes, which are anti-human. Uh, and we have to recognize that as a community and methodically and intentionally, intelligently counter that to take our country back, our uh, spiritual lives back, our existence back um, to 
probably not um, you're probably not helping at this point in time, uh, and you're not working in your own best interests. And uh, so it's part of their mythology. Uh, these forty-two gods. Um, uh, you know, nothing is random. Everything has meaning. You know, one, two, three. It's a FEMA drill. Three, two, one. Hello. Uh, it's a mega ritual that they're involved in. And so, uh, you know, what are they hoping for? This, this Hail Mary path that if they can just survive a little bit longer before the indictments are served, before the a uh, whole thing comes to a head and people start getting picked up off the streets for their treasonous criminal activity, that some event will spare them, just like 9-11 uh, stopped the investigation of the missing money at the Pentagon. They're hoping for some mega event that spares them <clears throat> from this going forward. So not only is this ritual just the Venus star with the two eclipses, it's also from Washington, D.C. There is a trident uh, fort coming from it that has three paths. And if you've watched my other videos of talking about the three paths, which is one is ascension, um, basically one is recycled back, uh, harvested, and the other one is death, where you get reincarnated. So there's these three paths, and they've created these three paths all through the um, symbolism through Washington, D.C., going right through uh, St. Louis, which is the cross of the two eclipses, and right out to San Francisco, the Golden Gate, um, and Seattle, the, the Space Needle. Uh, so we have three gates um, in the sky. We have the Golden Gate, which is by Sagittarius' um, spear, uh, his arrow. Then we have the Silver Gate, which is between the Taurus's, uh, the horns of Taurus. And then we have the Lion's Gate, which is between Cancer and Leo. And these are all mapped out um, on North America. Okay, so first we're going to discuss the Triangle, which is the Rio Olympics in 2016. The symbolism here is, you know, spiritual with Jesus. And then this symbol on the left to me looks like a Q. Now, the Q, I've explained before, is a needle in the back of your neck. And Juan has talked about that, that it was like a negative stamp on JFK's uh, memorial. And that needle would be part of the harvest um, path. Now, we see here the Brazilian flag. So they created this flag at a specific time. Uh, November 15th, 1889 at 8.37 in the morning. So I thought that's really bizarre, you know. And so then they're also saying here that they switched the stars around because you're supposed to be standing outside the firmament. And I'm like, why would they do that? You're standing outside looking down and you're standing on the opposite side. So the stars aren't the same as in the sky, like they're vice versa. So I thought that was really bizarre. Um, here they have them all mapped out, and, and like I said, it's like um, these are all the harvest path stars, especially the spices star. Like that's the main star that the moon's on, um, on the, when it's on the dragon day, which is uh, the 24th of December in 2024. The moon is on that star with all the planets, um, you know, in really uh, specific locations all to uh, mythos. Um, everything's perfect on that date and so I thought that was really weird you know it's basically representing the harvest of of, uh, of humans so the main cluster that the whole flag works around is the southern cross which I have circled in the middle here the little teeny cross that's at the bottom of the horse's back leg which is Centaurus so that's the path right because um, first you come through Sagittarius where Jupiter is there then you would get judged there, um, decide which way you're going to go. But if you take the right-hand path for the harvest, you go through by the Southern Cross, you go down into the ship, um, into Canopus, and that is basically the flag, um, the kite tail of um, the cube that's in the sky. And I'll show that to you later on. But the rest, the old flag here was also the Templar Cross. And here is the kite and the cube. 
everything's about the cube, right? Because the cube is like uh, part of the fourth dimensional, you have the tesseract. But I was fascinated by this because I found the winter uh, hexagon, which is like you can see without the, the Y, the yellow Y, it's a hexagon. And then I was like, oh my God, that's a cube. And then I was reading and it goes down to Canopus, which is the, the star that's in the ship. Um, and so it makes a, makes a kite. And so I was like, wow, it makes a kite. I couldn't believe it when I figured this out. Uh, it was just like it popped out at me. Um, and, you know, the kite symbolism uh, is, is also in um, Kappa um, Alpha Teva, which is a um, uh, fraternity for women, you know, through the universities. Okay, so here's the fourth dimensional tesseract. The, the small cube goes in and out of the big cube. And here's the Metatron, and you can see the cube there. I highlighted it, the blue, so you can get the, you know, the three-dimensional cube. And this is sacred geometry, but it's really, um, you know, the whole thing about this time event that this mega event that Juan was talking about, it's because there's going to be some time event where we get down to zero point and there's something changing in our reality. Here's another symbol for the Rio Olympics, which is the eight-pointed star of Ishtar, which is what, um, you know, Statue of Liberty represents. It's also the Inanna star. It goes back to Isis as well. It's the whole uh, MAGA mother, you know, the mother venus basically it's everything goes to venus you know all these symbolism through the generations of time all go back to venus is the mother virgin mary 2020 tokyo olympics looks like a q and also like the taurus horns there's q for jfk a memorial and here again we have this black and white symbolism uh, same as their logo it's the smart city it's basically cookie cutter cities for AI people uh, basically when you're harvested you're going to be uh, put in AI that's my belief um, you know and then you just kept calm so you don't uh, create a lower frequency on the planet here's one of the stadiums and to me it looks like the symbol for cancer um, the she the you know the shell of cancer is the 69 it's the yin and yang symbol everything's about numbers 23 being chromosomes and 33 being uh, vertebrae in your spine and it just happens to come to 69 cancer um, zodiac which is part of the lion's gate is super important it has um, this uh, the actually the bum of it has the flame it's like the doorway um, it also has a B cluster in there. It's called the Beehive Cluster. Uh, Mars is on that in 2024. And that is like the cradle of, um, of Christ. This is what the symbolism of, of it is. It's uh, the Beehive. Cancer is also the summer solstice, right? And it used to be a beetle, you know, the beetles. Um, and they, they have a stadium in Tokyo looking like the beetle. So it's all the symbolism of that. Hermetically, it represents Hermes, which is like what who Thoth represents, um, and also Trump, and that's the hawk. And then also, it looks like a comet. Um, uh, ancient's name was the Prepacy or Prepacep, um, and it also means offspring. So this is where we get um, the Christ symbolism as well. Um, Tokyo also has the sky tree, which is like the Babylonian tree, you know, it's like, this is what it represents also relating to Paris, it looks like the iota symbol. So Tokyo uh, is going to be like the new smart city, and it's called Kyoto, it used to be called, and it was the capital, like, so city, and you know, like the capital in the Hunger Games. And this name Fiji um, relates to Wisteria. And it's like they're trying to take over that symbolism of the Fiji Islands. And um, I'll explain why it's on a different path. And Melania happened to go to um, Tokyo to visit. And it was all like AI stuff. Um, and um, there was like wisteria falling down, like, like all done with AI. And um, she went to a museum called Mori. So the Eiffel Tower, Tower and also this uh, space tree 
represents the omega, alpha, and the iota. And this is important because um, on the 22nd, Venus happens to be in Capricorn right on the iota star. And if you notice, Melania stood at the iota of the Christmas tree for a very, very long time. Um, and she also has the rose jacket on. And when she's at the Christmas tree, she's pointing at the rose uh, sign, which, you know, means that she is... Uh, representing Venus, which I did a whole video all on her, how she is representing Venus. Even her, her, um, her family name goes back to, uh, the Gnosis Island, uh, which was the whole religion of worshiping bulls and Isis. It's, she's related to all that. So I think she's even born in the town that represents Isis. And of course, another picture with the obelisk um, in it. So this is all symbolism um, as her being part of the Maga Mother. So interesting, the Paris Olympics was in 1900, 1924, and now we have 2024. And they're using the Jupiter alchemic symbol for their symbol, which is looks like the number 24. So we're starting to see the 42 reversed into 24. It's, it's really being prominent in a lot of the symbolism. Okay, so this turquoise uh, color uh, line goes from Africa right through the Bermuda Triangle, right through to Tokyo. It's dissecting the triangle and um, also the small triangle. Now, this is the Eye of Sahara in um, Africa. It looks like an eyeball, but if you get up close to it, it's like looking like Atlantis. You know, maybe this was the hub of Atlantis. So that's really interesting to see that. Um, and it relates to the Bermuda Triangle because it goes through there. And you have, of course, Miami with Mar Largo. And you have uh, San Juan. <laughs> that's pretty funny because of uh, Juan O7. Um, and, um, you know, there, there's uh, lots of... Uh, interesting stories that the Dark Journalist talks about with uh, Bimini and Martha Luther King doing his speech there. A lot of elites go there. It's a little teeny weeny island, but there's like ancient um, stones, a pathway way close to there, all relating to Atlantis. Ernest Hemingway hung out there a lot, so very important area. This is the Stargate in Peru. Um, and Lake Titicaca and this there's all these numbers that relate to number 24 on this I did a video a long time ago about it But it also lines up to the winter solstice of course, you know because everything's about the winter solstice um, And here it has the gate of the gods. It's like supposed to be like a portal This is all relating to Venus the chosen virgins of the Sun on the Isla a la Luna so um, That's all Venus worship and then we have Easter Island What's interesting about Easter Island is all these statues are pointing inward, like to the volcano, looking at the volcano, and they're all made out of basalt uh, stone, which is volcanic stone, and they're buried. So I think they're trying to say, like, look, there's this, this ash is coming, this basalt ash, which I've done a video about how it's like a flesh magnet and sticks to you and uh, you don't want to like be leave you know you don't want to float you don't want to be sucked up by the wind you want to stay on the ground that's why they buried themselves with those statues I think it's kind of cool okay so right at the top the crown in Nunavut is an island called Prince Leopold Island and he's actually the son of um, Queen Victoria and it's really interesting because it all um, relates back to Freemasonry and also uh, his relationship to uh, Alice in Wonderland. Okay, so the island is um, a bird sanctuary and it happens to look like a crown, right? It's like a flat round circle, like looking like a crown. The bird symbolism is because like in the sky, there's all these uh, bird constellations. That's the ascension path. You know, like if you're uh, if you're like the phoenix, you ascend. But if you go the other path, um, it's more the um, harvest path and um, the kind of down the rabbit hole path in the sky, down the Aradus uh, River. Okay, so Prince Leopold had a really interesting life. He left university with honor doctorate uh, of civil law. He traveled around Europe. He also came to Canada. Okay, so that's where the symbolism there is, why the island was named after him. 
he was a big Freemason uh, guy, and um, it was his um, he was his mother's favorite. Okay, so uh, he also died really young at thirty. Uh, she had passed on um, uh, a disease to him, and he basically died when he was in his thirties. Later, he pursued uh, vice regal appointments in Canada and the colony of Victoria, named after his mother. But his mother refused to appoint him to his great unhappiness. It sounded like she was not the easiest woman. Um, there's I've looked into her history, and you know, it was kind of she was a got into arguments a lot with her family members. Okay, so he dated a lot, um, and one of the women that he dated, um, her name was Alice Little, Little, okay, um, and she uh, was related to Alice and, uh, Alice's adventure in Wonderland. Okay, so yeah, the whole book was basically written all around her, which I never knew before. Um, and he ended up having a daughter with another woman and called his daughter Alice. She ended up having a son with another man and called him Leopold. So it sounded like they were an item. There's a poem written about him, The Death of Prince Leopold, and it's like a really sad poem. Everybody was in love with this guy. He was supposed to be, I guess, really a wonderful person, um, and uh, he passed young, so the, the whole country was traumatized. He also loved to play chess, and here's all his titles and honors, Order of the Garter, Order of the Thistle. He was a big Freemason guy, um, and I'm sure he was part of this whole ritual um, that's being made across North America through all the cities. I'm sure he's he you know was probably one of the founding members of that since you know it started so early, um, and then the island being named after him being the crown of it all. Did you catch it when I said her name was Alice Little? Um, and uh, yeah, it's quite a scandal what happened with this girl. I think people had figured out that there was like pedophilia related to this little name um, with Adam Shift, but uh, it's also kind of a bit the same story with this young girl. There was some weird stuff going on. Uh, so yeah, I think Leopold knew about it as well. So, yeah, it's here. I'll go through the whole story. Okay, so Alice Little was the fourth of ten children. Um, and um, her dad worked at Lexicon. Let's see. And at the time of her birth, Little's father uh, was the headmaster of uh, Westminster School, but was soon after appointed to the deanery of uh, Christ Church, Oxford. So he's part of Oxford. The Lindell family moved to Oxford in 1856. Soon after the move, Alice met um, Charles Dodgson. Okay, so that's um, the guy that wrote Alice in Wonderland. That's his real name. Was uh, encountered uh, the family while he was photographing at, at the cathedral on the 25th of April, 1856. He became a close friend to the Little family in subsequent years. Alice was three years younger than Lorna and two years older than Edith, and the three sisters were constantly uh, childhood companions. Um, she and her family regularly spent holidays at their holiday home in uh, Penmorfa, which later became the Gothgard Abbey Hotel um, on the West Shore in North Wales. Anyhow, she ended up, um, one story is that she became romantically interested in Prince Leopold, the youngest of Queen Victoria, um, during the four years that he spent at Christchurch. So, yeah, so I think there was a, a really, they fell in love, you know, at a young age. Okay, so the relationship between the Littles and, uh, and the Dodge, and Dodgeton had been a source of much uh, controversy. Dodgson met the little family in 1855. He had befriended Harry, the older brother, and later took both Harry and Ina on uh, several boating trips and picnics to the scenic areas around Oxford. Later, when Harry met, uh, went to school, um, uh, Alice and her younger sister Edith joined the party. 
Dodson entertained the children by telling them this fantastic stories to uh, while, uh, while away the time. He also used them as subjects for his hobby, photography. It, ha it has often been stated that Alice was clearly his favorite subject in these years, but there is very little evidence to suggest that this is so. Dodgson's diaries uh, from 18th of April 1958 to 8th of May 1962 are missing. Okay, so there's this big scandal between the family. Uh, the relationship between Little and Dodge suffered as a sudden uh, break in June 1886. There was no record of why this rift occurred, since Little uh, never openly uh, spoke about it. Um, and the, the single page of Dodge's diary recordings, uh, you know, went mysteriously went missing. So uh, basically, it doesn't sound too good. Um, it says here, um, Alice Little. Uh, to, oh yeah, so the Dodgson may have wanted to marry the 11-year-old Alice Little and that this uh, was the cause of the unexplained uh, breakup. So it's basically saying that the parents of Alice uh, wanted somebody much better, um, but um, for example, uh, her, his brother or something fell in love with a 12-year-old girl and Dodgson's young, yeah, younger brother sought to marry a 14-year-old and postponed, postponed the wedding for six years. So they were like doing hanky-panky with these young girls. Like, 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 you know. So basically this guy that wrote Alice in Wonderland was a pedophile. You know, it's like lovely. Um, Elsie learns that Mrs. Uh, Lindell Little and that he was uh, supposed to be using the children as means of paying court to the governess. He also uh, supposed by some to be courting Ina. This might imply the break between Dodgson's and the little family. So it sounds like, you know, they tried to make it about the older sister, but he, um, it's all coded, the book, um, to her birth date um, and everything. I read that somewhere, yeah. Um, the whole book is coded to her. So Alice Little uh, married uh, Reninald uh, Hargraves, uh, also a Crickster. Um, they had three sons, um, and um, one of them named was Leopold, right? Like I said before, Rex, okay, which means king. Um, so yeah, it ends up being that What's interesting is this book also, Alice in uh, Wonderland, used to be called Alice in the Underground World or something. Yeah, I read that somewhere. It's Alice in the Underground. It's not um, the Underground Adventures. Yeah, here it is. Alice Adventures Underground, you know, which relates to the Baron Trump book with the Underground Adventures. So it's like, yeah, that's the original name of the book. Um, and also, after her death in 1934, her body was cremated. Anyhow, she ended up selling the manuscript, uh, and it ended up going into the British Library, but she sold it for a lot of money because she needed money after her husband died. Alice's mirror can be found on a display at the New Forest um, Heritage Center. So, yeah, so they've they put it in, like, um, a museum now, but... It's all about her. I never realized it was all about her. I think the dark journalist said it was some, about some other girl, but it really does seem like this whole Alice in Wonderland story was all about this girl that Lewis Carl ended up making a story about this whole thing that happens in the sky that probably the secret society, you know, knew about. Um, and he knew about, and then he created this whole story and made her be the little girl that goes down, you know, into these different realities um, and it's probably because he was like in love with her and wanted to marry her and he was basically a pedophile so it doesn't sound too good like eh, I don't think I like the story anymore so similar to Alice's underground uh, adventures there's this book written by Baron it's called Baron Trump's marvelous underground journey Ingersoll uh, Lockwood wrote it in 1893 so, yeah, I think something uh, definitely glitched in the Matrix. 
Now the name underneath the portrait is William Henrik Sebastian von Trump, which is interesting because Baron Trump's middle name is William, which I did a video all on that, the Will I Am, the same as Prince William. Um, and I think it all relates back to this um, uh, William in Germany. This is a little bit of a family affair, this German uh, crown prince, because uh, Queen Victoria's eldest daughter named Victoria, which is Leopold's sister, uh, married um, a prince from Germany, and she ended up having this son. His name is William. And there was a big scandal um, uh, with Queen Victoria being upset of who was looking after him and everything. So it's like a big family drama. Uh, but um, he, he got kicked out right around the First World War. Uh, William uh, became uh, crown prince at the age of six, retaining the title for more than 30 years until the fall of his empire on the 9th of November, which is the 11th month, 9-11 again, 18, uh, 1918. So, yeah, this is like all symbolism um, to 9-11 again, and he lost control of his empire around World War One. You can do a dig on it. And then there he is uh, with Hitler. So, you know, it's like, this is just a bunch of elite drama. This is what we're living in. Basically, the War of the Roses, right? Which side um, is going to get control? Now, this Nunavut Island, Prince Leopold's Island, is where the magnetic pole was. Um, and you can see it's shifting. It, you can see up in Canada or to the left, it's going that way. And it's coming around. Um, over Russia down towards India and it's also going up from the south towards the equator so it we're in a magnetic pole um, uh, reversal in a way but the the poles are coming together so this is why all the weather is bizarre and it was moving really slowly before but now it's moving like extremely quickly and they're having to update uh, constantly how how uh, much it's wandering it ends up uh, being like zero points. So I'm going to let Juan explain some of this and the symbolism to it. Just like 9-11 uh, stopped the investigation of the missing money at the Pentagon, they're hoping for some mega event that spares them <clears throat> from this going forward. But on the numbers, this is a crossing point. You know, this is the 44th Sunday of the year. And as I've said before, Linda, <clears throat> They're into this breaking the eight ceremony of break the eight. You got four four. It's this Egyptian mythology um, dividing the physical world from the spiritual world in this in this infinity sign. Uh, looks kind of like a sideways um, a hourglass, and uh, that point between being the contact point point between physicality and uh, the spiritual dimension uh, that these demon entities live in and occupy and this timeless energy force that they can tap into to succeed this zero point of demonic energy. Okay, so right on top of the Venus uh, pyramid uh, point of the star is a place called Port of Churchill, named after Winston Churchill. It's right on the left-hand side of Hudson Bay. Now, this port has connections to Russia. It's called the Arctic Bridge, and it goes all the way to Russia to a place called Murmansky. Merman. So we've got the Merman coming into this whole thing, and I'm going to explain all what the Merman and the mermaids are. But first I want to talk about Winnipeg, because it's basically the center of North America. There's the legislative building uh, that's a big Freemason um, ritual building. There's the Holy of the Wells, and you look down and you get the Anana Ishtar down in the center. And then you have the Golden Boy up on top, and he is actually looking north. So looking up north to the crown, right, up in Nunavut. And uh, he represents ascension. So this whole uh, building represents the Zava Javi star, which is on the left-hand side of Venus. So if Venus is pointing like face down onto Earth, that's why they built um, that um, building right there, because it represents that star. And the moon will be in that star on the 22nd 
um, of uh, December on 2024 at 9.09.09 in the morning. Now the foundation stone, which is in Jerusalem, um, is got the five-pointed star as well right there, the Venus star. Here's just showing um, the grid from Washington, how it goes all the way through Hudson Bay right up to Nunavut, our, our crown. Coming out of Washington is the trident, the three-prong fork. The bottom being the blue being the ascension path, the middle being the harvest path to AI, and the red going up um, the northern part is like you just don't make it physically and you just get reincarnated back. These are the three paths. Uh, one goes to San Diego, one goes to San Francisco, and the other one goes um, to a place called um, Lincoln. Uh, it's just below um, Seattle. So extending these lines out into the Pacific, it goes to the Hawaiian Islands, a uh, name called Kappa, which goes back to the Kappa Alpha Theta, and then the other one goes to Tokyo again, to, uh, you know, the key. Now this goes to this uh, um, island, Phoenix Island, close to Kappa, and there's these three monuments um, er erected in a triangle there, and uh, that is kind of like worshipping the phoenix, because the phoenix represents ascension to the Zabi Java star, which is like in Winnipeg. Now this island gets represented through either the eclipse or the trident, I can't remember, but it's in the French Polynesia. it's called Morea. It represents the yellow lizard, so we got back to the, you know, reptilian kind of worship here. Uh, the Morea was also called York Island, so, you know, this is very interesting because the Morea uh, are the three fates, they're called the Morea, the Moria, sorry, and they basically represent the sirens. The sirens can be feathered bird women that uh, sing a beautiful song and capture you on a, a ship, but also they can be mermaids or mer mermen, right? Like, so uh, basically when I was saying about that town in Russia, uh, the merman, it's the symbolism that this, the sound comes and you don't want to hear this song because if you hear this song, you're kind of like, enchanted and hypnotized and then they can do what they want with you. So that's the whole mythos of the fates. Here they are represented with San Francisco being on the left, which is she's, you know, you go to the be part of the tree of life. Then you have St. Louis in the middle, um, which is basically you don't make it. Um, and then you have on the right is New York, which is why the Statue of Liberty is there with the flame, because your flame is your phoenix you rise from the ashes. And so these are the three um, fates, the moray. There's an ancient uh, myth with uh, Mulisin, which is the two, um, two serpent tail, two mermaid tail, which is on the Starbucks. Now this is an ancient um, myth that many countries use. Atlantic in Gardens uh, did a whole thing on it. You can go watch it, it's a really short video, but it's really interesting. Uh, because it all relates to the mermaids and the sirens. I honestly think it's just like a frequency that kind of makes you go insane or something uh, when this event happens. So here is the whole thing about the moray. There's three of them. The clotho, the lachias, I'm probably pronouncing this wrong, and athropus. Um, so one's a spinner, uh, one draws your string and measures you. So the spinner like gives you, gives you rebirth. The, um, the one that measure you uh, is you're basically harvested, and then the, there's the death. And you can see them here. This It's in um, New York City. Here she is in Maryland, a uh, Druid site. Now, if you run a straight line through Boston, New York, Washington, it brings you right to the exact point of where the eclipse comes in um, to the continent. So this is the ascension line and why it goes all the way through to New York and all New York uh, representing the ascension. Even the spear on Trump's tower, you know, he's got the the upside down arrow going down on his building. Um, Statue of Liberty, um, Twin Towers, uh, where they were, Washington Gate, they're all on the exact same line. The whole city was built for this purpose. Like, you got to remember, there, there was ancient... Um, clocks that could predict all the eclipses and where all the planets were and the ancients were using this so they can measure out every single celestial event. 
I actually found a video where they uh, take it, took an old clock and they reconstructed it. I think it was in Russia and yeah, they said it was absolutely phenomenal, the technology. I'll drop the video in a link below. It is completely wrong for people to not recognize the spiritual aspect of the fight that we're in right now for the soul of our country. There is this incredible activity, this fight, this war that is taking place between spiritual forces. In the New Testament says uh, principalities and powers of darkness in high places. There is a spiritual war occurring. We may see the physical side of different players lobbying for uh, you know, their position and see it only as a Democrat, Republican type of a contest. But the city itself, where all of this is taking place, is built around an occult series of principles, representations, formulas, the temples of justice that that city is built around all have spiritual connotations and meanings. It's a spiritual war taking place in plain sight and that most people just see it as a, build, uh, a series of concrete buildings and uh, politics, Democrat, Republican. Look at the principles of the two different parties that are being portrayed in front of us, the choices that we as a nation are having to make as individuals. Okay, you heard him. It's an occult ritual, um, Washington, D.C., the whole uh, town. So the trident coming from um, the Lincoln Memorial through the, reelection, um, the reflection pool uh, goes into uh, three prongs, like I said, and it goes right through Arlington Cemetery, right to uh, JFK's memorial. And, you know, we have the Aquaman with his trident and the fish, the merman. So the symbolism is all there. Now, the trident is the um, alchemic symbol for Neptune, and Neptune happens to be on the top of the Kabbalah tree. The Kabbalah tree basically represents the middle path, which is the harvest. Okay, so if you become part of the tree, you become harvested. Jesus actually, you know, I found this thing where he wanted to kill the tree. He didn't like the fruit on the tree because I've done in my uh, previous videos the fruit. Uh, the fig um, on the tree is basically um, uh, humans, you know, and there was all symbolism. If you want to go back in my videos to watch that, um, it was in the um, Elite game. So this was really funny. I found this David Moria uh, with the Moray uh, dressed as a mermaid on October 29th, so 10 11 on uh, 2017 which is 11. So 11, 10, 11 at 11 o'clock. So you see how everything's coded. Everything is coded. And it's all about the merman. The merman, um, it also represents mirrors. So yeah, and here we have um, the address of Washington, D.C. It's 20024. So we're back to the number um, 24 again. 24, which is the reverse of 42. Okay, so the middle of the X is St. Louis. It comes to 9-11, some of the numbers. There's the silver archway, which represents the Taurus horns, the silver gate in the sky in Taurus. Okay, so here you can see it um, from an aerial view. It looks like a big giant bell. Okay, so for whom the bell tolls uh, is the end of the rabbit hole in the sky. I'll go into the constellations again and show all that. There's also a fountain of youth, kind of, across the, the river, which represents the nectar of the gods. And we also have one of these um, in Spain called the Magic Fountain of Montjuic. I'm not pronouncing that right, I'm sure. They have Godfather music playing there, which ties into the Q Post, um, um, Barcelona. Yeah, so this is all about the nectar of the gods again. Anytime there's fountain water, so it's the symbolism of the harvest. Then there's this courthouse. When you're up on the silver archway um, gateway, you can see there's an X behind it in the park, which would represent the crossing of the uh, two eclipses in uh, that town. So right on the same line as Washington, St. Louis is San Francisco. 
and we have the representation of the Golden Gate, which is the galactic center in the Milky Way with the Golden Gate Bridge. And then they just changed the name to Robin Williams Tunnel, which is like the rainbow for the Milky Way. And then we go back and we see that Robin Williams in his famous show, uh, Mork and Mindy, has the alchemic symbol for water, which goes back to the mermaids, all linked together. And of course you see Trump doing the silver gate with the horns and also the um, alchemic symbol with the pyramid upside down as well as Angela Merkel was doing it all the time too. Next is the lion's gate which is between Cancer and Leo um, and this is because Cancer is the summer solstice and um, very important beehive cluster on there which represents the cradle. So we see this with the two lions flanking the bridge. Uh, this goes back to the MAGA mother symbolism, the two X's on the bridge. Um, and um, yeah, it's in Vancouver, BC. The highway going through it is uh, number 99, which I explained the importance of that. It's basically 911 um, is 99. The Christmas decorations at uh, DC has the archway, it has Statue of Liberty, also has um, the Golden Gate Bridge and the Space Needle. Now the Space Needle is in Seattle, that's where the eclipse came through last time, just below there. And the, the needle is basically the Q symbol again, the needle in the back, the neck um, for the harvest. Now there's explaining here that the Emerald City is, you know, called Seattle. It's because of the trees around it. It's not because of the Wizard of Oz. It uh, certainly is about the Wizard of Oz. That whole movie is symbolism about the harvest. It's because um, the ball salt, the volcanic ash, turns the water green. There's even poems about this. You can read through these poems. Uh, ancient poems are really where you get a lot of great information from. And uh, Juan will talk about the Emerald City, City as well here in a clip. The River Leth is the green river that is basically after you get harvested is where your memory gets wiped. It's the river where you lose your memory. Oh, also this uh, last trident goes through Yellowstone Park and there happens to be a triangle around it with three military bases. This is the graph of the ash if it gets uh, blown, uh, Yellowstone. Now you got to remember Yellowstone is yellow brick, okay? So yeah, here's one. The snow represents the ash and the poppies represent um, the opium, which comes from Cassiopeia, the queen of heaven. And so these cultists have kind of divisions within them. Uh, the Saturnists are a very powerful group. And of course, they, these gods, these 42 gods that are part of this Saturnist uh, cult thing um, are here. You know, the, the 42 is a huge, huge, huge number in the cult. Uh, 42 uh, comes up in this event again because it's the crossing point of multiple things. It was just a number here, a number there. With, you know, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But this particular year, 11-3 is the 42nd day since fall. And so uh, uh, 42 uh, gods and their god, you know, it's just like at 9-11, you had all the symbology around the Twin Towers, these symbols of these 42 gods present to witness the spectacle in this altar scene, the breaking of the eighth, the breaking of the veil between the, the netherworld and, and the real world. Uh, this is the time of year when the veil between the two worlds is the thinnest in their occult um, um, you know, beliefs. And so 42 degrees is what your offset is when you're looking at the rainbow from the light source. So in order to see a rainbow where there's droplets of moisture in the air, you have to be at a 42 degree angle to the light source to see that rainbow. So 42 degrees to see the gods, their presence, to witness this. When you see Seattle, Seattle, the Emerald City, uh, I remember years ago when people started calling it the Emerald City. I'm like, what, where's that come from? Oh, it's from Wizard of Oz and everything else. I'm like, well, why are you calling Seattle the Emerald City? All of a sudden, this, you know, people are talking about it all the time. It hadn't been before, and all of a sudden, they started sticking this imagery in. And the Emerald City and the rainbow, you know, because that, that's part of the symbology of Wizard of Oz, then we're over the rainbow. And so... Um, this Emerald City, and, and, and by the way, uh, Linda, you and I talked privately, and I was talking about uh, the Emerald, uh, uh, the Green Man. Uh, Satan is portrayed as the Green Man. Why? Because he hid in the foliage in the garden. And so uh, he's the Green Man. Green's a common. 
common color here, this Emerald City. Uh, uh, Emerald City being a 33 uh, in the Chaldean Demetria. Again, this 33 showing up by the numbers. Um, when Obama, by the way, did his portrait, where'd he do it? <laughs> in the garden, very much believe. People were wondering, you know, uh, what that was all about. Okay, back to the ash, represented in the uh, Wizard of Oz movie. Melania touching the snow. Uh, it's like um, the fairy dust. There's all the crystal stars for the Queen of Heaven, the ice, the queen. Um, here we have Venus's mirror. I've explained this before. Venus has an orbit where it goes be in front of the sun for eight to nine days. It has the ninth month on either side, which is why she's fertility. And they used to fill this pan up with water, stare at it, um, and the reflection would go on the wall. And this is when they decided that, well, they thought Jesus would return because it's the birth of the sun. So the symbolism in Cassiopeia holding the mirror, you know, it's all through all the mythos, the mirror. Um, it's basically, you know, a portal, but also represents the sun, which the sun, this event that happens, it's the rays of the sun that create this whole change. And I found here with the magic cube of the sun uh, goes down to 666. So it's the beast, this is the sun. But then again, also man is 666 with the six neutrons, six electrons, six protons. So it's like, who's the beast? You know, is it the sun? Is it man? Is it Satan? You know, it's like, it's like all mixed up. So it's like whichever path you want to kind of put your head into, um, you can decide. Oh, I just wanted to mention Cassiopeia. It looks like an M, right, in the sky, the stars. And then we have the Florida two pillars that looks like the M with the sun right in the middle. It's uh, worshipping this event. It's everywhere. The Freemason symbol symbolism is everywhere. Here's the Saturn seal. Um, you can look at this and see two X's. You can see two V's. You can see W's. So Cassiopeia is M um, in the sky, but it's also a W. And they take the W and they make a cross in the center. It's like two V's with a cross. And that's regarding to um, the Saturn seal. Now, the Saturn seal, the Roman numerals come to XX1V. And if you, you know, see there's one V left over, but it's like the crown, um, you get number 24. So, you know, I think that whole symbolism is there with Cassiopeia being the W or the M, you know, M and M's, uh, it's, it's everywhere. So the W is really weird because it's not called double V, it's called W. So it's like this whole mirroring thing of your persona, like can you balance your energies, your female and male energies, so that you can be at total peace and unity, and then that way you can ascend. But if you're, you know, um, you know, a little bit heavy on one side or the other, you're unbalanced. So this is what it all goes back to, is your own personal journey. This whole event is all about you. It's not about politics. It's not about you know, the world coming to an end, the climate change. It's all about you and your own personal journey. And if enough of us can get um, balanced, uh, we can, you know, create a whole new world and basically get rid of the evil elites that are controlling and suppressing humanity for, for all this time. Okay, so San Diego is the ascension route. Okay, it's the bottom um, trident and it goes back to this uh, San Diagas. So the saying goes, Diagas is living proof that God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. Basically, he was a saint and he lived by his heart. And this is why San Diego is named after him. Also, Phoenix is all on this route, you know, because Phoenix is the bird rising from the ashes. It's ascension. In Phoenix, there's this big giant wormhole uh, up in the sky. There's the symbolism of the bird on fire for their flag. And then, of course, the London Olympics, which was 2012, which is adds up to 24, was the phoenix. So a symbolism through the ceremonies. So here's Trump dropping uh, breadcrumbs again. Sure, why not? Impeach me. I love it. Whatever. Now I'm going to go watch Joker again. Great film. What's the guy's name? Phoenix something? Bob Phoenix? That's it. Tremendous actor. Absolutely perfect. So it's like, it's so, it's so fun. Once you understand this game, you know, it's same with Mike Pence uh, dropping all about the Lodestar, you know, that's Canopus, which is in the ship. So it's like they're dropping clues all the time. It's quite hilarious.
So this is the Capitol Mall uh, building, which has the the man, the winged person sitting on top of it again, um, just like in Winnipeg. There's this Wikipedia page is pretty coded. Um, it's it's talking about the winged uh, seraphas. It's holy. Um, there's bunkers, uh, barley, which is the wheat, and then it's cramps. So I'm thinking that this, I don't know if this might be a safe house. Um, and, of course, they code it like this. Um, not sure, but uh, there's too many words in there relating to the whole event. And here it is. It's with the winged um, samaphas on top. So it represents um, winning. Um, also, it also looks like the Back to the Future movie, Route 66, which is 99, um, Meadow Gold. Here is um, the buckle of uh, the religious uh, sector down in the states there so yeah it's all the symbolism is all going around on this route for um, ascension okay so that's the cross the eclipse going in 2024 2017 went through columbia south carolina columbia is happens to be the constellation below the ship um, after you get harvested, you know, this is uh, part of that symbolism and even their flag here It's like cotton. It's like, you know, the ear of grain again. So that's all um, Harvesting symbolism. So basically the one eclipse coming from Seattle down to um, South Carolina was the harvest eclipse and the one going from Fiji Islands all the way up to um, uh, St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada is the ascension uh, eclipse. Even the hurricane that went through Puerto Rico, there's San Juan down there, uh, goes to Miami, the whole Bermuda Triangle. This Hurricane Maria was all representing, you know, the Virgin Mary Venus. Uh, the numbers come to 24. Okay, so here in Puerto Rico, uh, Trump says the response to recovery effort probably has never been seen for something like this this is an island surrounded by water big water ocean water and everybody was laughing about him talking about the water but um the water relates to um fiji the fiji water you know so the whole history of the fiji islands is uh, quite interesting there was a big scandal there um they ended up <clears throat> fighting for their freedom they didn't want to be colonized and uh, the burns family was killed uh, then, you know, they created um, a disease, the measles, they brought it in and they basically killed like 40,000 of these natives that live there just to get them under control. You can see their flag is also um, the dove symbol and um, their, I mean their crest and their flag is the Ishtar um, star again. So there you go. It's all goes back to the star. And we also have um, the Wisteria relates to Fiji. So the Fiji is the ascension line, but the Tokyo is trying to make it that that's ascension, is the Fiji, the Wisteria, the AI Wisteria that Melania went to visit. So you see how they're taking the symbolism of true freedom and trying to put it into this cookie cutter AI uh, reality. The mauve summer rain, yeah? purple rain, Okay, it's the it's the nectar of the gods that will fall onto earth um, if you've stayed here and you've ascended. You will have this mauve rain. Uh, that's what all the symbolism is from. It's the nectar of the gods because the harvest is to get the nectar. And I've explained all that. The nectar is basically um, phosphorus, which uh, creates a change in DNA. And phosphorus comes from human urine. Go figure. Remember Trump talking about the toilets? Yeah, it's all about the urine. Here's McLeod's um, family crest, which is Trump's uh, mother's uh, name from Scotland. And you can see it looks like a Q. We've got the Taurus horns for the silver gate. So that all goes to hold fast, which is um, in the Bible as well. So they have it here as hold on, but it used to be I'm coming soon. Um, hold fast what you have so that no one can seize your crown. So it's about ascension. You, you know, you want to hold on to your crown. The, the McLeods also have this other symbol where the Q is not, you know, it's tucked away and it says shine, not burn. I see it as shine, not you want to burn because the shiny thing is like in like the Wizard of Oz, like the Tin Man, he's shiny, he doesn't have his heart. So you can't ascend if you don't have your heart. Um, in this frequency of love if you're always in hate and everything and you, you won't be able to ascend you're just at not at the right frequency
Okay, so where the Ascension Clips in 2024 hits the coast, it's in Mazatian, and their symbolism happens to be the merman. In this following spring, right on uh, Baron's birthday, you can see the sun is right on the whale. The whale is Sitsas. It's um, it, it has great significance to all to the merman. Um, it's basically the big giant whale. Yeah, Perseus ends up killing it. It's like the beast. It's the return of this beast, which is, I guess, the X event. It represents this big giant sea creature um, like Ursula, uh, which is going to change everything. It's going to be like, I think it's like plasma. It's like Ursula with the octopus. It's like the plasma event, most likely from the poles coming close together. It's going to be shooting um, electrical um, lightning bolts. You know, it's a double X event, and they're saying here, not much has changed when you see from here the land of the Z. It's all the stars. It's in Sittas. Um, and then Inki relates to this um, constellation as well. Um, so you can see all the symbolism is there. It's like the X event, basically. The eclipse also goes through Durango. It has um, the seal of the two wolves because the wolf is what uh, is like um, Sirius star, which carries the ship. Um, and there's this area there where it's kind of like the Bermuda Triangle and they can't hear sound. So that's like the whole thing where you don't want to hear the sirens. So all the symbolism is there. The two wolves, one going up the tree, one you don't go up the tree. So yeah, it's, it's all there uh, with that. And that's the, the path of totality. That's the most, uh, the darkest place it's going to be is in Durango, which where the eclipse is, the center of the, well, the, the strength of the eclipse. Okay, so this all goes up to St. John's. This is the flag. It's the spear um, so for Newfoundland. So then we see all these names. It's twi Twiling, Twilight Gate Island. Um, this is where the eclipse is going. So it's like the twilight is between the dark and the light. It's the zero point, okay, between the red and the blue. Um, it's, you know, this polarity that we're in. So you, this, they've named everything relating to this event. There happens to be a winery there called the Auk Island Winery. Auk is like a bird. So Old Norse, it's back to the swan. You know, the swan is Cygnus, is the constellation for the birds to fly if you ascend. Also, we have the big Freemason, um, you know, building here right in St. John with the all-seeing eye. Now, the eclipse doesn't just end in Newfoundland. It goes all the way over to France, which happens to be where the 2024 Olympics is. Um, but this town, La Rochelle, was the original Knights of Templar um, camping ground, basically. They're, they're, that's where they're, they came from. And they have this cross, the original cross um, is cemented into the ground. It's a white cross, which is the Knights of Templar cross. It's, sometimes it's red, sometimes it's white. Here's the castle. So you can see that this was all planned. They, they knew all this in advance, exactly where everything was going to be uh, laid out with these eclipses. So back to Trump's mother's symbol, you got the castle, you got the flying legs, and you got the silver gate horns on top. Um, you don't want to float. Here it is in it. You, you too will float. You don't want to float. They also have the, the number it, or the letter it, the word it, um, is the 17 for the tribe of Dan, which is the snake. Okay, so all the symbolism is there. You want to go to the castle, which is stay on the ground. Um, you don't want to float. So stay inside um, December uh, 21st to 22nd um, through these three days. You don't want to go outside and get ash on you. It's a flesh magnet. Um, you want to, you know, just be able to stay calm and relax and have these energies come through your body, burning the, your feet to brass. And you want to be able to ascend and um, not be part of the harvest. Here's all the gematria of the three dates, um, how they're all relating. I explained this all in my last video with Prince William. You can go through that and uh, and uh, I go into detail what all these numbers kind of represent. But it's pretty, you know, self-explanatory right here if you just look at it. So, um, yeah, these are very important dates. The you know they're they're coming up between three eleven, seven eleven, and nine eleven. Trump did swap a 7-11, 9-11 date to a 7-11 date, so he, he did that as well. Um, so, yeah, it all seems like uh, this is just totally reality when you have, uh, 
elite people, you know, doing all these gematria numbers and coding them. And you're kind of like, okay, something's really going on. This is not just a political war, some major, major uh, event coming in 2024, which is going to change um, our whole reality. It definitely looks like that to all the symbolism. Okay, I'll just run through the whole path again, okay? So you come up the purple, you go to the golden gate, which is at the tip of the spear of Sagittarius. If you ascend, you uh, get your arrows from uh, Indus. It's the bag here with all the arrows are in. Um, and you can get your shield on the left-hand side here, and you fly away like the eagle with the pin in the mouth through Cygnus, which is the swan, okay? Cygnus X1, I think Rush did a song about that. So that's the left-hand path. It's the right hand of God because God is standing there receiving you. So you're going on the right hand of God, but it's the left-hand path. The same way as it's spoken about with the um, Brazilian flag. It's outside the firmament uh, looking down. You can see um, Virgo, the Virgin Mary, up above. There's the moon right on the Zavi Java star. You got the lion by the lion's gate by the crab, and Mars is right on the cradle. Um, that's the beehive. Then you have the little pot of honey because they're collecting the honey. Then there's Antilla, you know, the ant movie. Antilla is the vacuum that's above the pot, circled in white there. Um, that's the vacuum that pulls up the magnet from the magnetic lodestar with the magnetic clouds underneath the ship. Okay, this is all a magnet to pull, um, it's like a wind tunnel that's going to get you up in there. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty uh, surreal, guys. So the other path to the right is you go to the Golden Gate, then you go uh, get bit by the dragon tail, which is Scorpio's tail, it's the Azor dragon. You become the mad dog. Um, Centaur shoots you with the arrow. You um, go through Centaur's back leg and you see the Southern Cross and you think it's good. You go into the keyhole, which is kind of like the uh, Charlie and Chocolate Factory. You know, you, you become a small man because that thing is called the small man keyhole. You go down into the bottom of the ship with this canopus. It's like can or canopus. Yeah, it's like canopy. Uh, you know, it's canopy. So, yeah, and then the poopus deck. And you go up to the deck and then you come out uh, with the wolf that's been pulling the ship. And then you go uh, into the Silver Gate and you get judged by God. Well, you pass through Orion first with the hammer, God's hammer. You go through the horns where Jupiter is there, Taurus's horns. You come through, uh, you see Perseus, he's holding Medusa. So you get turned to stone or above there is Cannabella, which is um, you become um, a, a lamb. Okay, so that I think that's like you get reincarnated. Then you come back. Um, and then you get thrown down the rabbit hole, which is Iridanus, which is the river, um, the river Leth, kind of. Um, and then you have the needle there. You also see um, um, Columbia is flying away. And at the bottom of the river is the clock. Okay, it's like the um, Alice in Wonderland. You know, he's chasing the, um, the rabbit with the clock. And then it's the sculptor's head, your stone head, and your little teeny phoenix flies away. Here's another view where you see the bag of arrows, Indus, uh, the sculptor's head, the little phoenix. Um, you see Venus in the gate of um, Capricorn where she's gathering up her sheep and, and um, goats. And then you see Saturn with the purple rain. You know, that's going to be the god's nectar that comes out um, and flows all over the earth. So eventually it's going to be going to be fine, but it's like, you, it's just the path what you want. You want to think there's all crazy stuff, then, you know, you're not interested. That's just you, it, whatever your fate will be. You'll be, of the three fates, the three Moria, it will be your fate. And I'll sign out with Juan. And whatever your path is, I wish you all the best and peace. Get our neighbors, our friends, our relatives, our co-workers to think again, wake up. That's the Q project, is to give you this wake up uh, uh, call information to bring you out of your stupor, to realize what's being done with your life energy in your name as a people, as a country, uh, and to say no, and hell no. We are not going to passively, naively, um, uh, participate in these things. We're going to educate ourselves to what's really going on and we're going to do right by an act, an intention, intentionally doing the right thing as a matter of choice as opposed to uh, naively, passively, like sheep, going down a certain road to slaughter, both as individuals in our own personal life, heaven and hell, making a 
people in countries around the world in our name as though it's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's the choices that are being presented and we're being educated to what's gone on. And I, I, let me just add one final thing and then I think, yes, let's wrap it up let you get some of the questions, but there's three legs to the Q Project. Oh, that's right, yeah. President's tweet. It starts with the President's tweets. He has very coherent, precise communications. He doesn't let it happen through the media where they can chop and edit what he's saying. He's talking directly to the people, directly to our population, directly to the world. And he's saying what he wants to say without anybody else editing it, editing it down, twisting it, whatever. You don't have to go to CNN to find out what the president said or what he means. He communicates it directly, personally. That's an amazing, beautiful thing. Uh, I have so much respect for him that he has found, chosen, pursues a way of communicating directly where it can't be twisted. If you want the exact way he said it, the exact way he meant it, he has a mechanism. And you can go direct to that and you don't have to hear it uh, through the mealy mouth people at these other uh, uh, broadcasters and media outlets. Then the second thing is we have the Q drops, which outline the game plan, outline who the bad guys are, outline who the good guys are, uh, some of the uh, plays. It's a playbook. And even though we have all these plays in there, some of them are misdirections, some of them are details that don't become relevant until down the road. Uh, if, you have, if you know plays, if you have a playbook, you don't play every play all at the same time different places on the field, different moments in the game, different things come into play. So it's a playbook. And uh, you're getting an inside look, and you're also getting the opportunity to um, educate yourself as to how this game is going to be played, who the players are from behind the scenes. It's not just the president involved in the Q operation, which he is. There's no question about it. It's the Q team. It's the military intelligence, as I've said before, and uh, the uh, NSA uh, working with the president versus uh, this deep state and their entities, which is this uh, non-constitutionally uh, created FBI, uh, this non-constitutionally created CIA, these uh, the entities being used by this deep state to control the country. Um, so you have president's tweets, you have the Q drops, and then the third leg of this triad of communication, of working with the people, of education, and also taking the battle to the other side, drawing the lines, is the Q memes. The Q memes, uh, uh, the meme stuff, is critically important. It bypasses other choke points in the media and in the communications, and it also transistorizes condenses very complex information, very complex uh, messages into a visual. Some of the visuals are instant. You can see it, and in one or two seconds, you've got it. If we understand how they are slaves to the numbers, as we've talked before, it helps us to anticipate things they may do or to see their hidden thumbprint on things that are or will uh, take place or have taken place, you see that they're somewhere in the mix. Um, for example, this, this event on 3-11-1968 occurred 33 years before 9-11. <clears throat> and uh, you go into the bulletin of a 